Okay, we're here today at RealEarnCulture.com for the Beef Market Update with Ann Dunford of the Gateway Livestock Exchange. Welcome, Ann. Hi there, Sean. Okay, Ann, we've uh, started a fresh calendar, brand new year. Uh, of course, this is the time of the year where everybody sort of uh, makes predictions and thinks about the, the year ahead. I guess we should be no different. Uh, what can we expect from the beef mar the North American beef market in 2010, do you think? Well, first of all, I want to state this is usually where I go wrong for the rest of the year. But anyways, we'll start off on a good point. Um, we do, I do think there is some optimism as we go into 2010. It was a very difficult period over the last 12 to 16 months. There's no question about that. We've talked enough about that. Going forward, though, the supply story we thought would have a bigger impact in 2009. Now it does start to have more impact as we saw a smaller calf crop really over the last four years, significantly smaller over the last two years. And remember the delay in our whole production system. That starts to be felt, especially this year, especially in the second half of 2010, and then further so into 2011. So the supply story that we were grasping on to last year that we knew we could see was happening doesn't have its production impact till this year and next year. So that's going to start to happen, um, and again, more so in the second half than the first half. From a recession perspective, we talked about last year getting hit hard um, in regards to uh, negative impacts on beef demand. You've got to think that as we start to see the numbers come out for 2010 from a North American perspective, we're starting to see you know, improvements in unemployment uh, rates, starting to see some signs and some signals that, although maybe slow in fashion and questionable on you know, other impacts, interest rates, for example, as we come out of the recession, we should start to see some improvement on the demand side. And that was a huge, huge negative for us in 2009. So supply, demand, from a Canadian perspective, uh, Canadian dollar, I guess that's still something we got, we can't ignore. Granted, it's not gonna move up to 15% like it did through the past 12 months, but at the same time, I don't think we're gonna be looking for a 15% de depreciation in the Canadian dollar. So probably the, the strength in the dollar is gonna be something that we have to face going forward. Higher prices, does it mean profits? Not necessarily so. Um, I think input costs could be a challenge again as we go through through 2010, um, on, on feed cost side especially, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, that factor. So it's not a no-brainer, but I do think we see higher prices in 2010. The challenge is going to be on producers to look at opportunities as we go through 2010, look for risk management opportunities, and uh, look at programs like CPIP that we've got in Alberta now to use the insurance packages. There's things we can look at, and rather than trying to hit the home run, I think let's try to get base by base here through 2010. Right. So uh, from a North American perspective, we if we look at the, the rancher, what, what, how does he feel, or what, what is he looking towards in 2010 specifically? Well, he's at the end of the chain, as, as we well know, and of course the supply thing is the biggest part of his deal. So. He, we've seen a, a large exodus out of the industry, especially in Western Canada. Uh, we've had drought impacted areas, we've had high feed costs uh, for these guys, and uh, there's been a large exodus. At some point here, the supply story becomes a, a factor. We'll be able to talk next month, Sean, about the uh, January 1, 2010 cattle inventory numbers. That's going to tell us the tale. I think we could be looking at 16, 17, possibly 18 year lows in, in cow herd numbers. When, these, when this report comes out this uh, next month. So that, as sooner or later, is, is gonna have to start to have some impacts at the cow-calf level. Does it turn into immediate profits? No, but this is gonna be a signal that I think we start to see some better pricing by the fall of 2010. So on the, uh, from a feeder perspective, uh, you mentioned things like currency, uh, input costs. Um, how, do, how does the feeder feel right now? Well, he's had a difficult go. He needs a break. He'd like to see a break. Here's the problem. As we get into this envir environment of tighter feeder cattle supplies, smaller calf herd crop from the smaller cow herd, the, the struggle is we've got too many cattle feeders for what we're going to have for calf crop. So invariably at the, at the initial part of that part of the phase as we downsize uh, uh, numbers, we tend to overpay for feeder cattle. So is that is that shortage of... Uh, or uh, oversupply of feeders for the supply of calves is that across the board in North America or just in Canada? No, that's most certainly a North American situation and so we're gonna have um, US feeders pushing hard on feeder cattle, Canadian feeders pushing hard on feeder cattle. Sooner or later we're gonna have to get the, the in line but at the same time it probably means unless you're dotting your I's crossing your T's looking at risk management you could be looking at losses even in regards to higher prices. Uh, let's talk very quickly, actually, in a lot of these segments, we've never talked about this area of the business, but what about the packer? Where, where is the packer at right now looking into 2010? 
Well, he's had an interesting go. I don't think um, um, on fed cattle versus non-fed cattle, I think there's been two very different segments going on there. Um, North America has been short of uh, cow beef uh, for quite some time now, and that has been an area that we've been able to, I think, see the packer um, be profitable, at, especially at certain times of the year. Um, going into the first part of this year, I do anticipate these cow cow prices to get stronger again, could put him in a position where he's not profitable. But that's been an area where he's been able to make some money and that's why we've seen the cow kills as large as they have been in 20, 2009. Um, as far as fed cattle kill, that's been more of a challenge. The demand side, although we talk about it a lot from a, from a cattle feeder perspective, guess what? That they're the guys selling the meat and they haven't had a lot of fun either. Uh, when people don't eat middle meats, that's where the gravy is. And that's where the gravy is for the packer too. So um, I think it's been a struggle on that side. Going forward, the consolidation we talked about in regards to uh, fewer cattle, meaning uh, more difficult from a cattle feeder, same math holds true for the, for the packer. If he's going to run as efficient as he can, full bore, guess what? He needs cattle. He's going to have to keep the cattle from going to the U.S. to, to keep him here and, and running full out. So there's going to be some challenges as well uh, from both, uh, both of those two segments. Uh, packing and cattle feeding. So is there anything in 2010 you think that may surprise us? Oh, I'd love to, uh, as we saw our Christmas wish, if you remember Christmas, I'd love to be able to say that I think we might have a, a big change in the Canadian dollar to the downside. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd have trouble seeing where that might come from, but there's a surprise. Could we get some surprise export markets that have been so slow in opening back up? Could we get a surprise there which gives demand a big boost? Well, the U.S. and Taiwan, and that sort of changed again. <laughs> exactly. So it seems like uh, no matter what the rules are, there people make their own rules. <laughs> so basically, uh, 2010, we can expect the uh, the business to be uh, as interesting as 2009 was. Hopefully, that uh, leads to more profit for uh, ranchers and, and feeders, and uh, we'll definitely uh, keep the industry updated through the the video segments through the year. Look forward to it. Look forward to giving some better news in 2010. Sounds good, Ann. Talk to you later.